Good afternoon, Leonardo. Good evening. Hello, Simon. Thanks for you too. Not a problem. Right. I'm well, thanks. How how are things where you are? Did you have a good weekend? Yeah. <laughs> and you? Not too bad, thanks. Uh, pretty good. Uh, watched some sports and uh, did some teaching. Did some web design. <clears throat> How about you? Did you play any sports this weekend? No, I, I was visiting my parents in my hometown, and my relatives, my family. Excellent. Well, that sounds like a good weekend. Was it uh, yeah. rainy? Oh, in, in my city, now it's rainy. But ah. my hometown doesn't rain. <laughs> it didn't rain. Well, it's, it was raining here today. It's not anymore, though, but it's nice and cold. Uh, Luis, it's good to see you. Good night, Simon. Good night, everyone. Good night. Actually, actually I give, uh, just a little bit of a hint there. I know we say good afternoon, but when you say good night, it usually means good that bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, good evening. Yeah, good evening, because when good usually good night is something you say when you're leaving somebody. Okay, thanks. Um, did you play any sports this weekend, um, Luis? Look, man. Sports is my week. I don't <laughs> like sports much. Do you ever watch any sports? I like to watch volleyball. Volleyball, that's a, that's a yeah. nice sport, yeah. Um, Victor, welcome. Thank you. How are things? Did you have a good weekend? Yeah, I was studying English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I th think I saw you in a few of my classes, and I certainly yeah. had a lot of them. Uh, Daniela, welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you, too. How and hello, weekend? guys. Hello. Uh, hello, Daniela. <laughs> I was studying as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't do a lot of studying myself. Uh, Miguel, I see Miguel has joined us. How are you, Miguel? Hey, I'm okay. Great. Did you have a good weekend? Of course. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Somebody who always has a good weekend. And Yazan, uh, welcome. I don't think I've had you in my class before. Thank you so much. This is my first time. Oh, excellent. Uh, where are you calling from? I'm um, calling from Malaysia. Malaysia, very nice. How's the weather there? Nice and warm? It's very nice. Um, but in this time, it's too hot and humid. Yes, I imagine it's hot and humid a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's too here, much. Here, here it's a nice hot 46 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. Yeah. So that's pretty it's cold. Totally great. I think yeah, it's sounding good. <laughs> it's, Hi, it's, George. It's... <laughs> Hi, Simon. George just joined us. Yes, I'm here again. Yeah, we now have a full class. Uh, great. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I know. Well, there was one class this weekend. The class filled up within a minute. So uh, no. apparently there is a, a lot more students joining now. So um, you've got to show up early if you want to make sure you can get into the class. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You Do break you guys... the record. Sorry? You break the record today. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it's, that's three days in a row now. Uh, look at that. Leonardo's just bugging me now, trying to tell me how warm it is. 85 degrees, yeah. Yeah, I, I won't see that until July. Um, one of the things we're going to cover today, guys, is vocabulary. But I'm going to do it in an interesting way. Uh, I thought 104 degrees this morning. Good gosh, Leonardo, yeah. that's very hot. <laughs> that got my attention. Um, what I thought we would do is we would talk about sports. And we were talking a little bit about it earlier, uh, like volleyball. Does everybody know volleyball? Yeah. 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 Yes. Anybody not know what that sport is? 
Okay, and of course, I'm sure you guys have heard of football. Oh, uh, volleyball. Volleyball, okay. Uh, are you familiar with that sport? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. um, but what kind of got me thinking of sports is when I got to work this morning, there was an article in the paper, and it was about an extreme sport. Does anybody know what an extreme sport is? Extreme? Yeah. Okay, radical, mm -hmm. good. What what is it how Sky is diving. an extreme sport different from a regular sport? Skydiving Skydiving um can we can be, say uh bang, uh bungee jump. Well, bungee jumping is more of a, yeah, I guess that's more of an extreme sport. Skydiving isn't necessarily considered an extreme sport. However, there is a version of skydiving that is an extreme sport. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but these skydivers, what they do is they dress up in squirrel suits. So from their arm here to their side, if they open up, it's like they look like a bat. So when they jump out of a plane, they fly. And they usually fly close to mountains, and, and it's pretty crazy. Um, what ex an extreme sport is usually characterized by, there is a lot of risk. Okay. Uh, Daniela, what do you think the risk would be of an extreme sport? Uh, you can die. Yes. Uh, is it hard to die in an extreme sport, or is the risk pretty great, do you think? George. Mm. Uh, sorry? The, the risk, uh, Daniela mentioned that when playing an extreme sport, there is a risk of dying. Would you consider the risk to be high or low? High, very high. Yes. High. Yeah. Yeah, so extreme sports have a very high risk of injury and death. So does anybody know what happened in the news yesterday? Yes, Luis, that's correct. You can be a, a quadriplegic, I think is the word you're looking for. Let me just spell that out. I'm not a doctor, so I want to make sure I spell it right first. So in English, um, that would be quadriplegic, and I'm going to pick on Leonardo. Leonardo, what does it mean to be a quadriplegic? Um, you don't, you can't move. Good, good. What else? Luis, what else? If you can't move, what can't you move? You can't move in, at all. Mm. The arms and the legs. Uh, yeah. Usually you can use your, your below your neck. So you can use yeah. your mouth. Below your neck. Yes. You can move your head a little, maybe. Oh. Can you move your head or is it just your mouth and your eyes that you can move? Sometimes you can. Sometimes, okay. Uh, oh, Simon. Yes. Is it, is it rude to use the word crippled? Is it rude to use the term crippled? Um, today, most people use the term disabled. Uh, crippled is a term that people used disabled. to use. Uh, but disabled is mostly what people use today. Uh, another word I want to give you that's not really related to this, but it's similar, is people who are mentally disabled. So it's related to being disabled. We used to use the term retarded. Uh, retarded is not considered a. It's not considered the right word to use now. People can get offended by it. Mm -hmm. So if you participate in an extreme sport, there is a chance that you could become a quadriplegic. You could break bones. You can die. Um, they're pretty risky. So 
I'm wondering, did anybody read the news this morning and hear about a certain individual that uh, jumped out of a perfectly good balloon? Oh, yeah. 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 That was no. crazy. <laughs> Has anybody not heard the story? We see the video. You saw, see the video, okay. Yeah, Mid we saw the video. Before five so minutes. For five minutes. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't take long to fall. Now, one of you, and I don't, can't remember if it was Victor, posted in Facebook that he was insane. <laughs> <laughs> to characterize... <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> now, I know he didn't mean it literally, but it's, an, it's... Some might question whether this was a, an extreme sport or an insane sport. What I would like to do is I just want to give us an opportunity. I'd like to look at an article that I captured uh, yesterday uh, when it came out. Let me see. Let me find it here in Google Docs. I'm going to share it out. So if you guys don't have access to Google Docs, you'll want to add the add-on. So I'm going to open up Google Docs now, and we're going to take turns to read it. And uh, we're going to focus on vocabulary. Uh, let's see here. Select and give access. There we go. Can everybody see it? Let me know if you can't see it. I can't. I can. Yes, I can. Okay, no, Daniela, you said you can't? Can't. No, I, I can't. can. I can't either. All right. Well, then I'm going to do something a little different. Then what I'll do is I'll paste it into the chat. Just and share the link. Maybe you can share the link. Uh, okay. I'll try this. I'm not sure. I'm kind of new to using sharing Google Docs. Daniela, you have to click on Google Docs button and the uh, arrow. In the yeah, in the left top, I don't know how to say that. Try. So let's see now. Uh, say chat, share screen, Google Docs, YouTube. Eu vou oh, falar yeah. em português, é mais fácil. A seta. Estou clicking Google Docs, aí tem uma setinha no canto esquerdo superior. Do lado de arquivo, editar, clica na seta, vai abrir o um negocinho pro lado, aí vai aparecer o artigo. Não apareceu, apareceu create, share, notes, ou create, share, não sei o que lá. Não, é só, there are some times when, for whatever reason, it, it doesn't work for some. Um, I've shared my screen. Ah, I, I think. Oh, I got it. Working for me. Thank you. Is it working now, Daniela? It's opening and... Okay. It's not working for me, sorry. Okay, you know what? No. Uh, let's not worry about not trying to get it to work. Since we do Thank have the chat that. available... Oh yeah, I got it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So, Daniela, if you could read this sentence, please, or this paragraph. Yeah! Now it's here! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, the first part. Yeah, I got it. Yes. Yeah, we got it. Um, Austrian skydiver Felix Baumgartner stepping off a, a small metal platform near Hosveld, New Mexico, on Sunday, plugging to Earth from 24 miles slash 35 point no, no 38 five. Oh my God. Third, eight point six kilometers in space. Excellent. Point six. George, could you read the next paragraph, please? Yes, but I, I didn't. I can't see the, the text. If you take a look in the chat window, it's right there, starting with sometimes. Okay. Sometimes you have to go really high to see how small you are. Say the. Baumgartner, 43, 
then he jumped uh, the diminishing white dot against an impossibly black sky. Thank you very much. Now, can anybody tell me what the word jumped means? Uh, the no. past tense of jump. <laughs> to fall. <laughs> To fall. Uh, to, fall. to fall. No, it's not over. Um, <laughs> the past tense of jump. He jumped. Step into the, into the cliff. Okay, so I heard to fall. No, that's not completely true. Uh, so if I jump, I go up and then I fall. So to jump is to leap. To what? Okay. So. It's the word jumped means to leap, but because it has ed on the end of it, it means he has already done it. He jumped. The past tense? Past tense, that's right. So jumped is past tense. If I was talking in the present, how would I spell the word jumped? He jumped. Oh, jumped. Jump. Not pump. <laughs> I, yes. Jump. He jumped. He jumps. 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 You could also say he would like to jump, but that gets into more of the subjective, which I don't think we necessarily need to. Now, if you're currently, I don't want to give the word away. Um, let's say it's something you're currently doing. How would you spell the word jump? Jumping. Current, jumping, that's right. That's very good. What are words similar to jump? We call them synonyms. Lip. Leap. Yeah, very good. Oops, I'm typing in the wrong area here. I don't know what was there before. Up. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, so leap. Um, up, yeah, you could say go up. But you keep in mind that's not jumping. Jumping, you're actually Jump. jumping up, whereas leaping is kind of similar to jumping. Okay. Up, up is a preposition, right? Yes, but in, in, it's also an action too. So he went up, then he went down. That's jumping, right? So we just say jump or leap. Ah, I see. But with the verb go, right? Go up, yes. Go. Uh, but this guy apparently went down, not up. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's see. Uh, Leonardo, could you read the next paragraph, please? Okay. With this leap from 128 feet, bound. Oh, oops. 128, uh, how can I say? 128,000. 1,000 feet. Yeah. Baumgartner becomes a larger than life figure in aerospace history, joining the ranks of those who, get, who have pushed personal and tec techno technological limits as they temp tempted fate and tested science. Very good. Uh, Luis, if you could read the next one, please. Yes, he reached 833.9 miles per hour slash 1,342 kilometers or Mach 1.424, which is faster than the speed of sound. No one has ever reached that speed wearing only a high pad suite. Okay. So, how many sports involve people going fast? Can you guys name sports where people are going fast, very fast? Uh, Formula One. Racing. Form. Formula One, or as the French would say, yeah. Formula One. Okay. So I heard Formula One. What else, guys? So the top speed there, I think, is usually around 215 miles per hour. 
which is somewhere north of 300 kilometers. In the U.S., though, pretty well everybody knows miles an hour. Very few people know kilometers an hour. So what other sports do people go fast? Uh, model racing. Model racing? Yes. Okay. Uh, now think of sports where there's no motor involved. Yeah, without a motorized machine. Uh, how to say race? Uh, how to say that? Skydiving. Yes, 100 <laughs> meters. Okay, Skydiving. Boat. Okay. With a boat. Yeah, know how to say this sport. part? Skydiving. Yeah, uh, Bungee jump. 100 meter. Yeah. Snowboard. 100 meter. Sorry, I heard. And also, uh, bungee jump. Sorry, which jump? Bungee jump? Bungee jump, yeah. Bungee jump. Well, yeah, because the longer the bungee cord, the faster you go until you reach something called terminal velocity. Bicycle and at the Olympics game. So bicycling, yeah. But so far, the fastest one we've talked about is jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. We can say bicycling or just cycling. A lot of people say cycling. Cycling, yeah. Yeah. How how can I say that sport you down we you down in the snow mountain? Oh, are you talking about downhill skiing? Yes, yes. Yes. Skiing. What is the root of the word skiing? What what? The root, meaning, what is the root of the word? So skiing, um, it's something you're doing, so downhill skiing. Um, but the root of the word to ski is... Uh, ski? <laughs> no. Very good, it is. Ski? Uh, like that. Yes, to ski. Now, if you've already gone and, let's say you went skiing last weekend, how would you write the word ski? Skate? I don't know. It's a irregular verb. What do you think? Take a guess, guys. Uh, I think it would be the same. It, very good. It's skied, and yes, it is not the most. It, is it's it true? Well, yeah, it is. That's correct. It's it doesn't follow all the proper rules. And you can also, another form of skiing is what, guys? What's another type of skiing? There's downhill skiing and there's something country. Something what? Something Snowboard. country skiing. It's very slow. Snowboarding is another sport. Country skiing? Uh. Cross country skiing. What's that? That's a good question. What is cross-country skiing? Does anybody know what cross-country skiing is? No, I don't know. Okay. Now, this is the part where I'm going to ask you to take a chance. I want you to try and guess. What do you think cross-country skiing is? Skiing. The person who comes up with the craziest cross definition gets a, gets a prize. Country skiing. Hiking. It's like a hiking? Very good. It's like hiking. Uh, basically, you don't go very fast, uh, and it's like hiking through the forest, only you've got skis on. Mm. Nice. Hiking. Very good. Okay, so looking back at our article, there's one other thing. We were talking about what are fast sports. Well, apparently in this one, he went faster than the speed of sound. Do you guys know what the speed of sound is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. Not yeah. Does know. anybody not know what the speed of sound is? I don't know. Okay, George. Um, the speed of sound is the speed at which sound travels at a particular elevation. So if you're close to sea level, the speed of sound is different than if you're about 10,000 feet in the air. Uh, and, okay. Okay. So basically, imagine if I fired a gun, okay, or 
have you ever been to the fireworks, uh, George? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that you see the light and it takes a few seconds before you hear the sound? Yes. Okay. That's because the speed of light is a lot faster than the speed of sound. Uh, okay. Now I, I understand. <laughs> it's approximately eight, somewhere between 800 and 900 kilometers an hour. So I like I told yeah, or Mach 1. So this guy was going so fast, he broke the speed of sound. That's crazy. Really? Really? That's crazy. Yes. Um, whose turn is it next? I think, uh, uh, Luis, it's your turn to read. If you could read the next sentence, please. I can read again. I, I've just read. But, but oh, I can I'm sorry. No, let me give Miguel a, a chance. Miguel, if you could read the next sentence, please, the one that's highlighted. Okay. <clears throat> he fell at Supersonic's Peaks on the same date in 1947 at uh, uh, Test Pilot Torch. I don't know how to pronounce that. Chuck Jagger. Yeager. Jager broke the sound barrier in an aircraft. Very good. And let's see the next paragraph. Uh, Thiago, could you read that, please? Okay. Adding to his inevitable fame is the fact that the feat was streamed live on computers and smartphones around the world using more than 30 high definition cameras riding on the ground as well as in aid and outside of his capsule. A two hour BBC documentary will hit TV sound soon. I'm sorry. Can, so we can imagine what that uh, documentary will be like. Uh, now Victor, if you could read the next sentence please. It talks about, oops, I'm going to watch my mouse here. Ah. Simon, Simon, I, I could understand how can BBC could film the the fall of the, this guy. Apparently, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there were cameras all over the capsule, and there were cameras on him. Yeah. High definition cameras. So all the TV crews, they were ready to be able to create a DVD or a Blu-ray disc out of this, so they put tons of cameras on this thing to document it. He's going to break four uh, records, right, Simon? He's going to. That's a very good point. So a lot of times in sports, we have what is called world records. And he yeah. did break the world record. He broke a few of them. Can anybody guess what world records he broke? The fastest um, flying man in the air. Fastest flying man in the air. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's true. Anything else? It's related to going fast. Uh, the higher? The yeah, higher. the highest, yeah. highest yeah. jump ever. Yeah. And the higher of balloon. Space, space, space diver. Um, I think somebody did it a f about 50 years ago where they jumped in, they were on the edge of space as well. He's certainly higher up. Uh, somebody else was talking to, um, who, who was that? I, I think, think he, 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 he going up. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead, man. Don't worry. No, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Diego, he, you haven't he, talked he, too much. Yeah, okay. Um, I think he's going to, um, um, stay in um, uh, more moments and f just flying at the air mm -hmm. and uh, after that the, the big moment I think the last one uh, did uh, three minutes and, and he is gonna make uh, four minutes just flying I think this one Good. Well, that brings us, you've brought up some interesting words here. I'll get back to world records in a minute. But mm -hmm. 
the word to to fly or the verb to fly. Mm -hmm. To fly. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I heard different conjugations of that. Mm -hmm. So can you guys type out some of the different examples that we read? So if he did it in the past, how would you spell it if he did it in the past? Fly. Fly is the correct pronunciation. How would you spell it though? F I I T X. G T X. Um now Luis, I okay, flight's different. Daniela, very good. It's fly. Um I'm not going to say flight is wrong because I'm not sure if that's a UK spelling. I don't believe it is, though. Flew. He flew a while ago. Yes. What is the difference between flight and flight or f flew? How is flight different? Different uh, of what? I think flight is the, is the airplane traveling by a airplane, right? Yeah, it's an actual airplane flight. And by the way, I, I typed in, I'm thinking wrong here. It's actually flew, not fly. Why is it participate? Yeah. In the part. Now, President if. Another example is flying. He is currently flying. His flight may be late, though. So that's an example. So if if Daniela was coming to visit Toronto, her friends would check to see what time her flight was due to arrive. They would then get in the car and drive to the airport. And pick her up. However, if the flight was early, Danielle would have to wait. That's an example. So, in this next paragraph here, they were they talk about it in extreme sports. Could somebody read this for me? Who hasn't read? Uh, okay. I think Victor wants to read this one. Yeah. The event seemed to be extreme sports insanity, particularly at the moment when Bo Gartner could be seen standing on the edge of space in frightening HD clarity. Okay, what kind of export? What kind of sport is this? Mm, what kind? Extreme. Extreme, extreme sport. Insanity. <laughs> yeah. Now, insanity further describes extreme sports. Yes. yes. <laughs> Guys, any sport that requires a mission control, a doctor, video cameras, and you jumping from 128,000 feet is most likely involve a little bit of insanity. <coughs> Do you guys know what mission control it means? Yeah, the support guys. Support guys, good. Can anybody else give me a, an example of what mission control is? Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. monitoring. So when they the shuttle used to take off, they would have about 30 guys in a room that would watch it. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a sport that requires guys sitting at computers watching your telemetry, Chances are you're in one crazy extreme sport. Is football an extreme sport? No. Football, no. No. It's not. Now, what if we were playing football in on? Oh, sorry, what if we played uh, football in Antarctica? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Might be an extreme sport. Because <laughs> let me let me give you um, a crazy Canadian version of this. Imagine we were on an iceberg and we were playing football. Would that be an extreme sport?
Yes, it would, because you be, who plays football on an iceberg? That's extreme. You fall in the water, you catch hypothermia. Miguel, what are some other extreme sports you've heard of? I think Australia, football. Uh, you mean rugby? Rugby, yeah. Uh, hockey. Rugby, so hockey. Are, are these extreme sports, though? Yeah, I think we can say this. Yeah, sometimes. They are not considered extreme sports. No. Especially in Europe no. and North America. They're considered violent at times. But keep in mind, a hockey player has got tons of padding on him. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't... And I wouldn't say there is a, remember we talked at the beginning, isn't there a lot of risk of injury or death? Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, so yeah. probably not an extreme sport. Um, what else would be considered an extreme sport, guys? Martial arts. Mountain. Hmm, martial arts. I've never heard that one referred to as an extreme sport. Uh, okay, mountain climbing. That's that's an interesting one. Mountain climbing. Cave diving. What diving? Cave diving. Cave diving. Yeah. Okay, these are not extreme sports, but like skydiving, you can make them extreme. Some caves are very dangerous. The chances of you getting lost or dying can be very very real. Uh, there are forms of cave diving that, yes, could be considered extreme. Uh, mountain climbing. There are some mountain faces that are almost vertical. What does vertical mean? Vertical, horizontal. <laughs> I'm sorry, Danielle, I didn't quite hear. Vertical. I, I can't say this. I don't know how to say this. But vertical well, is... Yeah. Straight up. Whereas horizontal is sideways. So vertical is an up, down. Yeah, and that's, or people who go mountain climbing without any ropes or special gear. That's very dangerous. Okay. Motocross. It could be. It certainly could be. Um, I remember somebody earlier said Paris Dakar. Some would consider that to be an extreme sport. It's certainly hunting, not unless you're hunting people. Headhunter. Well, okay, does anybody know what a headhunter is? No. No. I don't know. We have a lot of headhunters in this country. A uh, headhunter is, is like a person who... Uh, who tried to find someone to work in his company, something like that. <laughs> Very yeah. good, yeah. It, it's an Imagine idiom, it's not literal. People mm -hmm. actually... Well, let's, let's go back in history. Many, many years ago, there used to be tribes in some countries where they would go hunting people's heads, or if you got in a war or a fight with them, they'd chop off your head, and they call them headhunters. Today, they're called corporate recruiters. Okay, so we're getting a little bit off topic here. Um, now, I am sure you can imagine that to decide one day that it'd be really nice to jump out of a perfectly good balloon from 128,000 feet, it's quite a bit of a journey from where he was to where he went ended up yesterday. Daniela, can you tell me what a journey is? It's a trip. Yeah, well, you know, that's a good point. If we're talking synonyms, and does everybody know what a synonym is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, it's, it's a synonym, so you're correct in that aspect. But if we're going to focus on the definition of what the word means, we're going to focus on the 
literalness of the word. So a journey, well, is similar to a trip. A journey is generally the act of traveling from one place to another. A trip, on the other hand, well, is a journey. What type of a journey is it usually? It's short journey. Very good. It's usually a short trip. Sorry, it's usually a short journey. So, for example, um, let me think of a sentence here for journey. Mr. Baumgartner's journey began many, many years ago when he first started base jumping in the United States. I don't know if that's true. I just made that up. But that's a journey. It's long. It's long or it's short? No, a journey is usually something that is long. A trip is characterized as being short. So, for example, you, if you ever go on a road trip, has, everybody, has anybody ever heard the term road trip? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's usually a short, a short trip. Yeah, Route 66, for example, it's usually a short yeah. trip in your car. Like two months ago, I went on a road trip to Boston. I would not say I went on a road journey to Boston. We can use. Uh, can we use it as journey, journey to uh, person at the past when we. When they they discovered our country, he they had had a, a long journey. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Cases. Yes, they did have a long journey. Yes, and that's an exa excellent example. Some would say um, um, they were traveling, uh, and travel is very similar. Travel usually implies that you're. You're making a journey, but typically you're traveling to a different country. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but they were very much on a journey because they didn't know another country necessarily existed where it was. They thought they were about to discover China. So, if somebody says, Are you planning on traveling anywhere? They're usually inferring, Are you planning on flying somewhere? Like, are you going to the Caribbean? Are you going to Europe? If you're going on a journey, that implies you're definitely traveling. You're going on a longer trip, though. A journey might be, well, I'm planning on going to China this winter. Uh, we're going to stop up in Taiwan first. That's going to be our home base. Then we'll go to China. Then we're going to go to Cambodia, Vietnam, and Thailand before coming back to, uh, going back to China. That would be a journey. Another word that was brought up is voyage. What is what is a voyage? Voyage is a um, French word. Very good. It's also an English word now. Can anybody tell me why the word voyage could be a French word? Sorry, voyage. Voyage is derived from the French language. It is not an English word, although today it is an English word. It didn't start off as an English word. There are a lot of French words in the English language. Can anybody tell me why there's a lot of French words in the English language? Okay, I'd like because, you guys to try because, and guess. Because actually, I think. Uh, English language is uh, compiled from uh, uh, French and Germany. Yeah, but the question I'm asking is why? Why is English, why does uh, about 20% of the words in English come from France or French? Because the... Because the, the Latin, American Latin? Very, no, I, it's a good guess. So, French is a, a romance language. Do you know what I mean by romance language? Yeah. Romance Latin. language? Latin language. Yes, it, it derives from the Romans. Rome. Like Portuguese. Yeah. Like Portuguese, mm -hmm. like Spanish. Yes. Yeah. English is not a romance language. Saxonic. 
Very good. Angles, Saxons, and Jews. These were Germanic tribes that settled England. So let me give you the answer then. Well, actually, no, before I give you the answer, I want you to guess. Why would there be a lot of French words in the English language? What would possess a, a country to incorporate a lot of foreign words in its language? Or would it be by choice? I don't know. In Portuguese, we have a lot of French words as well. And I don't know. Because the war between Britain and French. Oh, that's there you go. Because war. And if my I'm, my history isn't the best, but I I believe it was the Norman conquest of the Brit English court. So essentially, at some point, the French occupied uh, the British court or the English court. It was and so the language of Britain for about a hundred hundred and fifty years was French. But this was only for the aristocracy. What do I mean by aristocracy? Mm. The richest men. Yeah, the rich people, those who controlled. Ours, yes. The rich, royalty. Yeah. Who have the power. Yeah. So, Postness titles, really. Yeah, so what essentially happened over... Not rich. Um, generally, it was the, the wealthy because the, the average person living in England at the time continued to speak English, Middle English. Okay, so that's why we have a lot of French words. So getting back to the word voyage, it is a French word. You're very That's very correct, uh, Daniela. But what is it about the word that is different from trip. It is like a travel, but the, um, it, is a, it is a travel on the ocean, something like that. Ah, uh, somebody's looking in the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> I know, George. <laughs> Wikipedia. Uh-huh. No, this is good, because you're learning. Um, it is a voyage, yes. Uh, or it, it, is, it used to be considered something you do on sea or in space. It's a very, very long journey. Jacques Cousteau, uh, maybe. He also did a lot of um, diving trips, so not necessarily voyages, but sometimes, yes. Well, we've got about 12 minutes left, so I want to take us back to vocabulary. Um, one of the words we talked about before related to sports was... If it's really crazy, what kind of sport is it? Uh, extreme sport. Extreme. extreme sport. Very good. And people who participate in extreme sports, um, what do they risk? Uh, their lives. Their lives, yes. What else? Uh... Miguel, what else do they risk? Okay. Yes, and what do they, what do people risk who participate in extreme sports? Their health. Uh, yes, they can certainly risk their health. And let me ask Luis, who's a doctor, why do they risk their health? What can happen to them? They they can to be quadriplegic. Quadri Very good, quadriplegic. Quadriplegic. Now, if they're only paralyzed from the waist down, what kind of paralysis is that? You can't what? move your arms and your legs. You can't move below your neck. That's quadriplegic. But if, and think of the word, it has quad in front of it, which means four. Yeah, so, your two arms and two legs. <laughs> yeah, so if you just have the use of your upper body, that would be paraplegic. Mm, okay. yeah. um, mm. Thiago, could you, t could you let us tell us what some extreme sports that we talked about? Could you list them off? Yes, they could get hurt. Another one? 
Yeah, what are, what are some extreme sports that we talked about? Uh, skydiving and okay. um, um, uh, climb mountain. Climbing mountain, yeah. Yeah. Leonardo. Uh, so, um, uh, cave diving. Cave hey. diving, very good. So, Thiago just talked about cave diving, skydiving, mountain climbing. All of those words, ING words. Now, if we were going to talk in the past, how would we change diving, climbing, and skiing? Um, we would have to put ED in the end. Could you type them out for me, please? Very good. Very good. Now, if I was to say he flied yesterday, would that be grammatically correct? He what? He flied yesterday. He flew. Yes. Not? It depends on the flight. He flew. flew. He flied yesterday, is that correct? George said he flew, Victor said he flew. Uh, Leonardo said dived. Flight like he, uh, he was in a flight, I think. He flew then, is correct. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay, now I understand. You guys have been working so hard, I think we're, we need to do something here shortly. We need to help reinforce some of these words. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one and we're going to do a hangman. Okay, um, who's first today? Oh, Daniela, you're first again. I don't know why you always occupy the first slot. Um, can I have an A? An a? Yes. My favorite letter? Not nope. today it's not. Uh. <laughs> George, it is your turn. Can I have it, an I? Well, yeah. <laughs> there are two eyes. If Luisa was here, she would already have guessed it. Leonardo? I know the word. <laughs> what is it? I know, I know. Skydiving. Skydiving. Okay. Another one. Oh, oh God. Wait. Okay. Yes, another one. Uh, we'll go with. Uh, we'll start with Leonardo this time. Okay. Um, can Can I have an um, M? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Luis, your turn. Can I have uh, O and O? I believe it's just one. Very good. Okay. And Miguel, can you guess a letter, please? Can I have a consonant or can I have a vowel? Um, a D. Can I have a mountain? Oh, I almost said it out loud. Yeah, no, you said, <laughs> <laughs> you said the word. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there heard. is no D. I heard, and I know. The, <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're gonna have to wait your turn, though. <laughs> what was that? Uh, Thiago, uh, it's your turn to guess. Um, put you. A U. You know there happens to be one. Uh, <laughs> Victor. Uh, I think Danielle is gonna guess it, so you gotta go quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, can I have... Mountain Dowell Hill. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mountain. Can I... It's yeah. Victor's turn. I... Okay, guys. <laughs> can I have a T, please? <laughs> a T. <laughs> Mountain car climbing. Yes. <laughs> How do you spell that? Cly, cly what? Climbing. 
with ing in the end. Kaibins. Kaibin. Okay, guys, I want to talk to you about a few things we can do here, a few little tips and techniques. Um, I use these myself. If you have a Mac computer, what you can do is you can go to, um, what do they call it here, the, the dashboard, and you can have a dictionary widget, or you can go to dictionary.com. It not only will tell you if the word is correct or not, it will also speak it for you if you want. Um, other sites that are very good to use, uh, a lot of people like this one, freerice.com. If you play a quiz, I believe, and you get 10 correct, this is what I'm told, it actually sends uh, some rice to people who don't have a lot of access to food to certain countries. And I've been told that it is true and it actually does happen. So you learn and people get food. Uh, another one is vocab, you Larry, um, hold on, let me just type this out. After a long day sometimes, I don't always type properly. So vocabulary.com, excellent site Hi, for learning Miguel. words, excellent for, um, oh, uh, Miguel, uh, thanks for coming, uh, glad you could join us tonight. Okay, well, bye. Vocabulary. have a nice night. Thank you. Good night. So vocabulary.com, it also tests you on words. You can actually build lists. It's a lot of fun. I've even got some ideas on games we can do later on with vocabulary. Uh, it's very, very helpful. Um, and of course, if you're looking for synonyms and antonyms, thesaurus.com. And if, for example, if you brought up voyage under thesaurus.com, you would see trip, you would see uh, journey, uh, travel, and some other words. They're very similar, but they're not identical. And that's the importance of a thesaurus. If you're writing, if you're doing creative writing, you don't want to use the same word over and over again. It gets boring. Mm -hmm. And a thesaurus helps you change it up a bit. Coming up in a couple of hours, I'm going to be teaching, no, actually I'm not going to be teaching, but I do have a class. It's called Study Guide, or sorry, Study Advisory. Advisor. Yeah. yeah, and that's in two hours. Has everybody attended a Study Advisory before? I don't. I was. Yeah, I stay with Rebecca. Oh, yes. Rebecca, she's very good. Yes. Very good. Yeah, very good. Daniel, teacher. Daniel Watson. Okay, I have I don't know about Danielle, but I've uh, watched some of uh, Rebecca's stuff, and she's very, very good, guys. Yes, um, Rebecca is good. So, Luis, could you tell me what you do in a study a study advisory? We we have to bring our doubts to the class and ask the teacher. The students have to bring the your. Uh, there are doubts to the class. Okay. Doubts. Um, doubts, one way of looking at it. Basically, in English, a study advisory or study hall is where you go when you want to learn. There is no agenda. I don't have an agenda. I'll, I'll ask things such as, do you guys have any questions? That's one of the first things I'll ask is, do you have any questions? If everybody's quiet, then I might say, okay, are there any words you would like to know the meaning of? Are there any topics that you'd like to understand more? Are there any um, what else? Would you like help with writing? Would you like help with speaking? Conversation skills? It's basically an open class that we can talk about anything. Yeah. It's 10 o'clock I guess. Yeah. Yeah. In Brazil, ten o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ten o'clock. I will be in the 
Juliana, I think, class. Yes, sorry, Simon, but uh, Juliana is, yeah. is going to to do a class to Brazilians. For Brazilians, oh. beginners. Can I come? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Join us. Join us, yeah. please. <laughs> yes, well, Simon knows everything about Brasilia. Yeah. Right. Well, so the, the city of Brasilia. You are a Brazilian, yeah.